also I have like a little bit of a like a little bit of a moral dilemma going on. I don't know exactly what to do about it, and I probably shouldn't be talking about it here. There's something going on that I'm like, are those mine? Like technically are those mine if they fall and what constitutes them falling? How is nature involved? What is nature? Who is nature? Buenos dias amigos, I'm Sean. And that's Astrid. And we did it. We sold everything, traded our hectic New York City lifestyle for a more beachy existence here in Mexico. Along with our two cats, Sanderson and Indo, this is Sean in Paradise. How you begin your day is how your day becomes. And some days, I approach the morning like this. If you're wildly passionate about art, then San Pancho is your place. San Pancho has an absolutely dizzying amount of art. Behind every tree, down every street, around every corner, more art. And I know the saying goes, like, you should stop and smell the roses, but when you're in San Pancho, grab a bike and check out some art. So today I like set out to take some videos, like some still shots of just various murals throughout town. But what I didn't realize is that finally, finally done is the main mural that's on the stage here in the Plaza del Sol. And check it out. Big old turtle, looking killer. San Pancho. And I also feel like this mural being done now, this is 2022, this is the first one I think we've seen since 2019. I don't know, that's a bit of a sign that maybe like this is all over and we're kind of moving forward. San Pancho, Mexico definitely feels like everything's kind of moving forward with life. Also where San Pancho has a famous music festival yearly. People from all over the world, some of the top musicians come here. Well, the whole plaza fills up with hundreds and hundreds of people. <laughs> Everything from classical to banda, cumbia, hip hop, Latin, whatever you like. This mural being back up in San Pancho is like, <sighs> super nice to see. I like being on stage. The art of San Pancho really reflects the people of San Pancho. It's young, it's goofy, it's self-taught. You can't tell where the professional artist ends and the young graphic enthusiast begins. Even the bike store here has art and then a cool mural. Color and life is just popping all throughout town, whether it's the fruiteria or a little sandwich shop or even just a yoga studio. Heck, even the car wash has dope art. And last but certainly not least is Entre Amigos, which is our community center, it's our art center, it's the center of action for the children in our town, and it's just like the raddest place. But that's like a whole other video. You know, just as therapeutic as like walking around and being in nature, like it's so proven everyone understands that like walking around in nature is something that's super therapeutic, it's super good for us on many levels. Looking at a heart hummingbird, heart mermaid, I don't know what that is, but it kind of gets your mind alive and kind of gets you going, gets your synapses firing. And you know, that's just a really good way to kind of interact with the world. I think so many times people will spend all their life like not living in the environments that they want to live in. If you value nature, if you value art, like live in a place that has a lot of nature and a lot of art. If you value concrete and architecture and all those kind of things, live in a city, live in that environment if that's what vibes you. What is in your value system that you appreciate? What do you require? All of that weird art stuff, all of the hummingbirds that are mermaid, it's all coming from this hand? People are constantly like riding their bike for the sole purpose of walking their dog. It's pretty hilarious. Go ahead right now and cross your hands and make a butterfly. You know what I mean. Lock your thumbs, wiggle your fingers. That's how big this white morpho butterfly is. Some believe they are a sign of good fortune and a beacon of hope for the future. Now I see one of these every day, but I'm not trying to think that far ahead. So Astrid just asked me like, hey, can you take over the food I just made to our neighbor's house? Jeez, uh, oh my, how much food? These cats eat better than we do. Anyway, I don't have a box that's big enough to carry all of this food around the corner over there, so I I think what I'm gonna do is, oh, it's like everything I wanna do, I just like, it's a friggin' cat. So like, like, oh, I'll have a clever idea. I'll take the wheelbarrow and use that for all the food. But then I'm like, oh great, I've got like 40, one, two, three, four, five, six, 40 times six, 240, I have 240 pounds of cat litter in the friggin' wheelbarrow that I gotta move. I just feel like I'm playing chess with a friggin' 
cats all the time and like they're clearly winning. Oh, so now I have to move 240 pounds of litter out, cover it, then take the wheelbarrow over, then load up all the cat food, and then take the cat food over to our neighbor's house who has the standalone freezer. Deals me over. told I enjoy tasks that involve me figuring things out and making cat food is absolutely disgusting Astrid does that so oh careful buddy it's sort of like a Pied Piper situation like you know instead of like the woo and rats I could like do this lead all the cats you know what I mean that is a buffet right there So I have like a little bit of a like a little bit of a moral dilemma going on. I don't know exactly what to do about it, and I probably shouldn't be talking about it here. There's something going on that I'm like, are those mine? Like technically are those mine? If they fall and what constitutes them falling? How is nature involved? What is nature? Who is nature? So here's our property line, our wall. The walls are right there. So if you would think of everything, everything on this side of the wall is technically mine. My neighbor's coconuts. When they fall, they're gonna fall over here. It's actually gonna land about there. So the question is, when it lands here, do I just enjoy it and not say anything? Are those the rules? Or do I like graciously bring it over to the neighbor or do I just chuck it over? But I want it, you know, like I want the coconut. It's those coconuts right there. And now technically, they're on our side of the property. I was gonna go up there and like steal one, no big deal. But I just went and talked to our gardener and he's gonna cut this palm frond here for me, which is actually coming from their tree. But he asked me like, hey, should I cut some coconuts too? And I was like, no, but I might say yes. We have coconut trees, but they're gonna not have coconuts for like five years from now. I feel like this is legit stealing though. It's as big as my head. You wanna cut open your first? You wanna? You don't? Come on. No! Every day we say that thing is hard. Yes, we know that thing is really hard. You yeah, not even there yet. No. That's a tough coconut to crack. <laughs> There's a guy in the next town over. His name's Marco Mignot. He's a professional surfer. And he opens this, which is taking me like for fuck's sake ever. <clears throat> he opens it up with his elbow and then just drinks it on the beach. Yeah, it's pretty sexy. <laughs> So good. You wanna try? <laughs> yes. And thanks so much for watching this week's video. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Did I steal my neighbor's coconut? Or am I just overthinking everything as usual? And now would be a really great time to like the video and possibly subscribe or even think about sharing it with your friends. You're not going to want to miss next week's video. Oh my gosh. It's so big, Indo.